So today I wanted to tell you about, um, well, it's another beautiful Sunday, so I wanted to say God bless you guys, and I hope you have a great Sunday, and, um, I kind of want to talk a little bit about it, because I, I personally, I love church. Church is beautiful. So, a lot of people think that, oh, when you go to church, that it's just, it's just that. It's just, you just go there, you sit down, you listen to the pastor, you go home. Like, you, a lot of people tend to think it's tradition, that you're just supposed to go. But the real reason we go to church is not to just sit down and be entertained. We go there to learn the word of God. A lot of people just go there to be entertained. You know, to hear the pastor go, And Jesus said. N -n -n no offense, but not all pastors do that. And um, uh, it's really good to pay attention to what the pastor is saying. Very close attention. And to read the word of God for yourself to see if what they're saying is true. So like if they tell you, well, we're in this chapter doing this chapter. And you hear them reading it, then read it for yourself when you get home or follow along in church. Um, I have a very hard time following along in church sometimes, but thanks to my Bible app, it's a lot easier because, you know, trying to go through the book, looking through all the pages, I'm like, oh no, I can't find it. All of a sudden, clicks on my phone. Oh yeah, here it is. <laughs> it's much easier. <clears throat> if you don't like reading, there's also audio Bible apps. I found a particular one that actually did like voice acting where like he, the person would do like the voice of Jesus and the voice of like the people and stuff and it kind of felt like it was first person. It was kind of nice. I accidentally uninstalled the app and I can't find it. I'm so annoyed. So I'm just reading it now. But like, you know, I'm not much of a reader, but I read the Bible and <laughs> I read that Bible app. I, I prefer the King James Version. To me, that one's the best. That's the first Bible I've ever received when I actually had a Bible. I have another one, b but it's a new translation one, and I don't like it. So I downloaded the King's James Bible app, which is much better. And if you don't own one, that is a great option because it seems like everybody owns a phone. And uh, you can also, um, maybe you can even look it up on the computer. You know, there's a, be careful who you go to look up who spreads the word of God. Personally, I recommend Mark Hardy, though he, he's a great guy. He does talk a lot about the end times, though. Um, but you notice that he uses a lot of, he uses, not just a lot, he uses only proper scripture, and he's always quoting scripture. And see, it's good when someone's able to quote exactly what it says. You don't want to go to somebody who, you know, says, oh, I spread the word of God, but then it's talking only about what they think. See, if, if a person says this is from God's word, then it has to be from God's word. You can't change it. And I used to have a lot of people watch my old channel when I was spreading the word of God on my old channel. But I was always reading from the Bible. I was never using my own words. And I would always be sure that if something was my opinion, I'd say, in my opinion. And then I'd say, but if it wasn't my opinion, if it was God's, you know, word, I would say, in God's word. Because, you know, we got when we spread the word of God, we got to be sure that... If you're saying that it's your opinion, that it's your opinion. If it's God's opinion, you know, not even opinion, that, that's the truth. God's not a liar. If it's God's word, then it's God's word. And you don't want to say that God's word is your own word, and you don't want to say that God's word is your word. <clears throat> Another thing, we as man are, um, not to be mean, but we as man don't always get things correct. And so, if we read the Word of God, we would know what's right. Because a lot of people are like, and this is not to be me, and I have nothing against anybody, um, personally, but I do know what God says in His Word. God is, okay, so uh, it says in God's Word, um, do not condemn thy brother, but it also says to hate the spirit that's in them. So, for those people who um, are gay, who say it's completely okay to be gay, that, um, you know, that, well, how can God be a loving God if he doesn't let um, a girl and a girl and a guy and a guy love each other? Well, here's, here's something for you guys out there who believe that. Number one, 
God is a loving God. He is all love. He doesn't have no hatred. He doesn't have no evil. He, he's not both good and evil. He's only good. The devil is evil. And all those people out there who say that it's okay to be gay, God created Adam and Eve for a reason. That is obvious. Anything that is, you know, um, unnatural, like, for example, it is natural for a man and a woman to love each other. It is unnatural, it's, it's, it's very unnatural for a man and a man and a woman and a woman to love each other. And you think about it, because I, at one point before, like, I had gotten saved and stuff, it was like, um, I had went out with a girl for a week and, ugh, something in me, and I wasn't even saved yet, something in me told me, uh, this is wrong, and see? Even even before you get saved, God has always been with you. And a lot of people tend to think, well, how is God so great? How do you know if he even exists? God is great. Because you know what? I used to be a very depressed and angry person. I used to have anger issues, which nothing can cure. I had ever since a little girl. I had been going to counseling to try to cure that. Blowing bubbles, sitting in a corner, counting to ten, you know, the whole nine yards. Going to counseling for like an hour and a half or two hours just just to stop me from getting angry. Well, what did you do this time? Well, then after I got saved, guess what? Completely, the, I felt instantly changed. A heavy burden was lifted off of me and I was completely at peace. Now you see, that, that proves you are saved. You... You all of a sudden feel like a whole new person. God says you are born again. You're not the man you were. What that means is that you're a new person. You're a new man. You're not who you were. And my family, because you know how family is, my old one, they would tell me, Oh, well, you haven't changed. Like, well, you, why are you acting different now? It's, I mean, you've always talked back and was mean and yelling and all that stuff. But the truth is, I had changed. And for all those people out there who don't know God, you should get to know God because He loves you. He loves you just as you are. Well, hold on. He does love you as you are, but He doesn't like it you know, the gay stuff and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> read the word of God, because if you read it, you would know the truth. And let me tell you, knowing the truth is a wonderful thing. Most of all, knowing God, knowing the most glorious being in all of existence, loves you. And see, for many years, my mother, she never told me she loved me. She always beat me and always told me I was nothing. But once I got saved, God told me that he loved me. He told me that there was no need to fear. He said he'd never leave me nor forsake me. And when, and when all my family, especially my own mother, I still have a couple of family members who talk to me, but my own mother turned her back on me. God stepped in and said that I love you. And then he brought me to a new family. Both pastors. My younger sister, my new one, she, she loves God. And that says something. She loves God. They love God. I love God. And I learn every day. I, I learned so many things from them. Like, it, it's been two years and a few months now. I'm 21 now. I came when I was 19. I've learned so much. And even my family are like, it's good that you've learned a lot of new things. And they're honestly surprised, you know, because it's like they, they were so used to me being who I was. But then they're happy for me, the few family members who I do still talk to, and like my aunt, my uncle, my other uncle, my brother Eddie, and my sister, um, uh, uh, Angie. So with that being said, I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. And God loves you. He loves you so very much. Don't let the world tell you who to be. Because the world isn't cool. Be like God. We're just strangers passing through. We're not of this world. God is not of this world. We, as God's children, are not of this world. So follow God.
God loves you. And I love you too, brothers and sisters. And so, get courage, for God loves you always.